During the war, the lives of 13 prostitutes were exchanged for the lives of schoolgirls. And before that, they were just ordinary women who wanted to live. On December 13, 1937, after more than 20 days of bombing, Nanking was finally occupied by the Japanese. The whole city was in ruins. With corpses everywhere, the Japanese went on a rampage. Everyone was running for their lives, but they couldn't escape from the disaster. A small group was about to leave the city when they ran into a schoolgirl being chased by the Japanese. Major Lee ordered a counterattack. After a fierce battle, they risked their lives to save the schoolgirls. The girls fled back to the church. In Najin, only this church was temporarily protected from looting under the aegis of foreigners. The priest was killed by a grenade. Apart from the schoolgirls, there was only a priest's assistant and a mortician who had come to see the priest off. At that moment, a group of beautifully dressed women, famous prostitutes in Nanking, forced their way into the church. The students peered at the prostitutes through the windows, curious and disgusted. As soon as they arrived, the prostitutes took over the basement. As if by magic, the dark and damp basement became lively and even filled with scent. At night Mo finds John. She can't speak English, so she asks him to use his status to get them out of town. But this is a very dangerous thing to do. And even in the face of Mo's temptation, it doesn't agree. The next day, Major Lee bursts into the basement with a seriously injured teammate. The prostitutes were shocked and then taunted soldiers for hiding. But Major Lee paid no attention. He tended to his teammates' wounds and entrusted him to them before leaving. He said he just wanted him to end up in a warm place. But Major Lee didn't go far either. He was guarding the church from a tall building across the street from the church. When he could have left, on this day the women wanted a shower in the students' bathroom. But they wouldn't have it. Schoolgirls taunted them for being unclean rats from the ground. The women were furious. They fought. The assistant came out to help, but it was no use. They got into another fight. Suddenly a bullet is fired. Everyone panics. The Japanese are coming. The enemy stormed the church. The schoolgirls ran in all directions. But soon they were caught and dragged and beaten. Their hair pulled and their clothes torn. The whole church was filled with the wails of the schoolgirls. It was hell on earth. They tried to run to the cellar. But the Japanese were in hot pursuit. They turn and run upstairs so as not to involve the prostitutes. John was furious at the sight. He pretended to be a priest and shouted at the Japanese to stop them. But the Japanese didn't care about him and even knocked him unconscious. A little girl was being raped by the Japanese when a bullet pierced his body. Major Lee is helping them. He noticed the movement when the enemy broke into the church. A bullet attracts the attention of the Japanese and they gather to search the place. Major Lee used the bomb he'd just planted and detonated it with his gun as the Japanese passed by. The Japanese suffered heavy casualties. But Major Lee finally revealed his position and the enemy threw a few grenades at him. Eventually he was found by the Japanese and shot dead, but as he fell, he tied the bomb's fuse to himself. Thus the remaining people in the church survived. The prostitutes also apologized to the schoolgirls and thanked them for distracting the Japanese. Two days later, Mo suddenly realized that two of the prostitutes had disappeared. She learned that they had gone back to the brothel to get their lewd strings. A prostitute named Do fell in love with Major Lee's teammate. But he was about to die. Do wanted him to hear her play the lute before he died. So she sneaked back to the brothel with another prostitute. Lan, they managed to get the peepaw strings. But on their way back, they ran into Japanese soldiers. Lan was shot to the ground and Do jumped into the river. But the pursuing Japanese also jumped into the river. Do was tied to a chair and game raped. She struggled desperately, but finally angered the Japanese and was stabbed to death. Dan, who came out to look for them, saw their bodies and couldn't bear to tell the truth. He lied and said they were hit by a grenade. Everyone knew what happened, but sometimes people lie to themselves so that they can live better. No sooner had everyone recovered from their grief than they received another piece of bad news. The Japanese had taken over and sealed off the church and forced the schoolgirls to attend a celebration banquet. On the surface, they invited the students to sing, but everyone knew they wanted to rape the girls. Unwilling to be humiliated, the students climbed up to the rooftop of the church that night holding hands and planning to jump to their deaths. But then Mo stepped forward. She told the students she would go for them. The prostitutes will go to the Japanese celebration banquet in the place of students. But they all know that they can't come back again. Upon hearing that Mo is going to the banquet in place of the students, the other prostitutes offer to go for the students as well. Students finally put aside their prejudices and bring them their new uniforms. They took down the curtains and tore off the bed sheets, altered the students' uniforms a little bit, and wrapped their brass singles to put on the students' uniforms. John then did his best to cut the women's long hair into student hairstyles and dress them in schoolgirl outfits. The prostitutes, who were just now mature and attractive, now became innocent schoolgirls. The assistant suddenly did a head count. There were only 12 prostitutes, but Japanese were count 13 schoolgirls, one less. They were in trouble. 
What Zhang didn't expect was that the assistant said he would like to be the 13th person. He said the priest's wish was for him to protect the schoolgirls. So Zhang made him a wig and put makeup on him to hide in the crowd so he could fool the Japanese for a while. Zhang told him to jump out of the car on the way to escape, but the assistant refused because he wanted to help John and the schoolgirls to buy more time for escape. The day of the celebration finally came, and the Japanese car appeared in front of the church on time. Wind was blowing sand, and the prostitutes were walking up to the car one by one. While the Japanese counted them, they made sure they were right, closed the doors, and the car was on its way. John didn't have time to grieve. He ran back to the church as soon as the Japanese were gone. In this period, John repaired the truck in the churchyard. He had all the students lay down in the wagon, then covered it with wooden supports, and finally piled empty crates and wine on top. He pretends to be a wine merchant, and uses his only pass to get the students out of the city of hell. The ending of 13 women are not accounted for in the movie. In the novel, a few of the women resisted and were killed by the Japanese. The rest of the women were sent to comfort stations and died within a few years. Only Mo was able to escape because she was serving foreign officers and they were watching her less. 14 women from humble beginnings died sacred deaths, and perhaps stories like these are common in the Holocaust. So even in times of peace, we must remember history and reject war.